Once World War I ended, Germany was forced to sign the Treaty of Versailles, which forbade the nation from maintaining an air force. But when Hitler rose to power in the early 1930s, he began to rebuild the Germanic air force from scratch. One of the earliest aircraft that the German military secretly tested was William Messerschmitt's famous BF-109. It quickly became one of the most advanced fighters of its time. The BF-109 was first flown during the Spanish Civil War as part of the Condor Legion that helped General Franco. By the time the Luftwaffe regained power before the outbreak of World War II, the Messerschmitt BF-109 was the backbone of the German Air Force. It would also become the most produced and used aircraft in history. The Messerschmitt BF-109 was broadly used in all fronts. It flew over Western and Eastern Europe, Africa, the Mediterranean, and the Atlantic with various combat configurations. Its tremendous versatility made it able to perform well as a fighter, bomber, escort, and support aircraft. It was no coincidence that by the time World War II was over, the most highly decorated German pilots flew exclusively aboard customized BF-109s. The Rise of the Luftwaffe When World War I ended in 1918, the once powerful German Empire was forced to sign the, in their eyes, demeaning Treaty of Versailles. The treaty held Germany responsible for the war, limited its military prowess, imposed harsh penalties, and obliged them to return lands. Germany's military was reduced to 100,000 men. The Air Force and the Navy were dismantled, and the country entered a Great Depression. Germany was in significant debt, and its people were starving. The resentment that followed gave way to the emergence of a political figure that promised to rebuild the country. His name was Adolf Hitler. In 1933, Hitler and the National Socialist Party rose to power and immediately embarked on a military rearmament program, abrogating from the Treaty of Versailles. The industry grew massively, and the economy exploded. The Heer, the Kriegsmarine, and the Luftwaffe were secretly rebuilt from scratch. Hitler named ace pilot Hermann Göring as the Luftwaffe's commander-in-chief in 1935. With the help of Erhard Milch, state secretary of the new air ministry, airfields were constructed all over Germany to build and test prototypes for the renewed air force. Ernst Henkel had already built the HE-45 light bomber, the HE-51 fighter, the HE-46 recon, and the HE-111 bomber, but all of these aircraft were tactical units. The Luftwaffe was still missing combat fighters that could be mass-produced. The next few years would see the arrival of the next generation of Luftwaffe aircraft. The Junkers Ju-88, the Dornier Do-17, and the Messerschmitt Bf-109 would become the most advanced fighters of their time, just in time for World War II. Messerschmitt Bf-109 In 1933, the German Aviation Ministry's Technical Department published a series of research projects related to the future of air warfare. One of them called for developing a single-seat fighter that could replace the Arado AR-64 and the Henkel HE-51. The project demanded a fighter that could reach a top speed of 400 km per hour at 6,000 meters to be sustained for 20 minutes, with an approximate total flight duration of 90 minutes and an operational ceiling of 10,000 meters. The aircraft was to be powered by a Junkers Jumo engine that produced only 210 horsepower. It was the only engine available in 1934, as Germany was rearming itself from the ground up. Additionally, it had to be armed with two 7.92mm MG-17 machine guns, or a single 20mm mounted cannon, equivalent to a ground Flak 30 anti-aircraft gun. Wilhelm Emil Willy Messerschmitt, a World War I veteran working on gliders and aircraft since he was young, was rapidly becoming a leading figure in aeronautical circles within the Reich. In collaboration with Robert Lusser, Messerschmitt designed a small, angular, low-wing four-seater monoplane with close landing gear that retracted into the wings. It was simply dubbed the BF-109. The first BF-109 prototype was powered by a Rolls-Royce Kestrel 695 engine. It flew for the first time in September of 1935. Messerschmitt later tested new prototypes with Umer 210A and Daimler-Benz V12 engines. One of the aircraft's continuous innovations was Messerschmitt's desire to make it as lightweight as possible by minimizing its amount of separate parts. One of the advantages was that the landing gear was directly attached to the fuselage. This way, the wings could be removed without any additional equipment and thus simplify its maintenance. 
However, the two long legs that supported the aircraft created a large angle that almost nullified forward visibility when on the ground. This defect would eventually be blamed for several takeoff and landing accidents, especially from novice pilots. Besides that, the BF-109 delivered excellent combat results. The first version was equipped with two machine guns mounted on the fuselage to maintain Messerschmitt's idea of low-drag, low-weight monoplanes with thin wings. But when the Luftwaffe discovered in 1937 that the British Royal Air Force was planning on adding eight guns to its Spitfire and Hawker Hurricane fighters, the BF-109 was modified to add more firepower. Two machine guns, a 20mm gun that fired through the propeller shaft, and a pair of 20 caliber MG-151 installed in gun pods under the wings were added to the aircraft. The BF-109 was shown to the public for the first time during the 1936 Berlin Olympics. One year later, the BF-109 was displayed again during the fluke meeting air show in Zurich, where it showed its incredible speed and maneuverability. Operational History The BF-109 was used for combat for the first time during the Spanish Civil War. More than 20 aircraft were delivered to the German Condor Legion in 1937, helping General Francisco Franco win the war. Soviet aircraft used by the Spanish Republicans proved to be no match against superior German machinery. After the war, new wings, fuselage, and weaponry were added to the BF-109 to improve its battle performance. Pilots that participated in the conflict also gave detailed accounts of stability improvements that could be made so that it could be made more effective for dogfights. By the time World War II broke out, the only rivals of the Messerschmitt BF-109 were the British Spitfires and Hurricanes. According to the Smithsonian National Air and Space Museum, quote, Supermarine Spitfire was the first aircraft to seriously challenge the Luftwaffe fighter. The Spitfire was slightly faster and definitely more maneuverable, but its performance at altitude was inferior. During the Battle of Britain, the RAF usually fought over friendly territory. The BF-109's limited fuel capacity reduced fighting time over Britain to about 20 minutes. Many 109 pilots exhausted their fuel and crashed into the icy waters of the English Channel. The Spitfire outperformed the BF-109 at altitudes above 4,600 meters, whereas the Hurricane could outturn it. However, the German aircraft could easily outclimb both. At the Battle of Britain in 1940, the limited BF-109's fuel capacity greatly affected the amount of German aircraft that could be fighting the numerically superior Royal Air Force fighters at the same time. As it would eventually happen in the Eastern Front, German logistics forgot their supply lines were overstretched and that the Britons were fighting in their own country, with immediate access to reinforcements. Meanwhile, the Luftwaffe had to bring reinforcements from France, Germany, and other countries. After the failure of Operation Sea Lion, in which the Royal Air Force outnumbered the Luftwaffe, the German Air Ministry ordered more BF-109s with several upgrades. The aircraft needed to be more powerful and capable of repelling Allied bombing raids over German cities. BF-109s modified with jettisonable external fuel tanks, additional machine guns, and a pair of cannons with 210mm rockets were used to intercept American B-17 flying fortresses and consolidated B-24 Liberators before they could drop their bombs. During the early years of the war, the renewed BF-109 dominated the skies and became an essential resource of the Blitzkrieg Doctrine. It reigned over the skies of Poland, France, Norway, Malta, and Africa, but the Allies would eventually catch up. Several camouflage patterns and armaments were used on every front. When Hitler launched Operation Barbarossa in 1941, the Soviets would lose more than 21,000 aircraft against a smaller number of heavily equipped BF-109s. During the first three days of the Soviet Union invasion, Hermann Göring received a report that stated that the Soviets had lost 4,000 aircraft against an estimated loss of just 80 German BF-109s. German Aces The BF-109s were the most produced aircraft of their time. To accelerate aircraft production at the beginning of the war, Messerschmitt licensed SS-owned companies to manufacture parts for the BF-109. The Flossenburg concentration camp, as well as Mulsen St. Michel and Gusen in Austria, were some of the facilities where prisoners of war and other captives were forced to work on aircraft manufacture. By the end of the war, more than 35,000 BF 109s had been built, and some of them went on to serve until the late 60s with other European countries. The BF 109s were also credited with more put downs than any other aircraft during the war. 
In their book, Willy Messerschmitt, Pioneer of Aviation Design, authors Hans Ebert and Johann Kaiser point out that more than 100 BF-109 pilots were credited with the destruction of at least 95 enemy aircraft. Thirteen of these airmen scored more than 200 registered kills, and only two surpassed them. BF-109 ace pilot Eric Hartman was credited with an astonishing 352 victories. In North Africa, Hans Joachim Marseille paved the way with more than 160 registered kills. And Finnish pilot Ilmari Utalainen was credited with the highest non-German victory ratio, with 94. By the time Germany surrendered in 1945, other Allied aircraft, such as the P-51 Mustang and the updated Spitfires and Hurricanes, were formidable opponents for the Messerschmitt Bf-109s. Today, many Bf-109s are exhibited at aviation museums across the world. They are widely regarded as one of the top five aircraft of all time because of their innovative features, combat performance, and the ace pilots that flew them.